Stan Jabalisco here uh, with a little explanation of something called the unit circle model in particular for the trigonometric sine function and the trigonometric cosine function. You may have uh, heard of the triangle model where you define the sine and the cosine as the ratio of particular sides of a right triangle. Uh, the ratio of the lengths of those sides. Well this particular model, the unit circle model, is something that is an uh, entirely different way of looking at it and it was presented by my 10th grade mathematics teacher Mr. Frame and I thought it was just the coolest thing since Big Island Bakery sourdough rye bread. <clears throat> Even though I didn't hear of Big Island Break Bakery sourdough rye bread until many years later. But imagine a Cartesian coordinate system. Now what do we mean by Cartesian coordinate system? Well it's named after the French mathematician René Descartes who presumably first used it. It is simply the XY plane, the familiar X y graph, x on the horizontal axis, y on the vertical axis, and basically what we do here is we create two number lines from negative to positive, negative to positive, intersect them at right angles, and then graduate them in uniform increments. Now we can draw something on that coordinate system called the unit circle. That means a circle centered at the origin right here that's the point zero zero with a radius equal to one unit so it intersects these axes at four points x equals one y equals zero x equals zero y equals one x equals minus one y equals zero and x equals zero y equals minus one and we can denote those points as ordered pairs of the form x y you've doubtless uh, had that hopefully you have so that you pretty much understand what I'm getting at here now suppose that you take a ray and start it at the origin the point zero zero and you make it go straight out and intersect this circle at some point. Let's just call that point P. Now we can rotate that ray around and around the circle 360 degrees with zero degrees corresponding to this direction right here. So we go counterclockwise that's 90 degrees continuing 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees and back to zero for another round. 90 degrees. Now sometimes you'll talk about more than one revolution around this circle and then it'd be 360 degrees, 450 degrees, 540 degrees and so on. But let's just for the moment talk only about the first revolution from 0 to 360 degrees. Now this ray intersects this circle at a particular angle with respect to the x-axis. Right here, right now, it looks more or less like 30 degrees or so. Let's just say that it actually is 30 degrees. Now suppose that we draw a vertical line going straight down from P. Well, that uh, kind of failed, didn't it? Try again. Vertical line going straight down from P until it intersects this x-axis at some point right here, uh, w which we might call, say, x zero. And let's say we also draw a line horizontally to the left from P until it intersects this axis at a point we might call zero Y. Now there's a, something very interesting about this. This angle we might call 
theta. The lowercase Greek letter theta looks like a zero with a horizontal line through it and then you make it italic. So theta in this case equals 30 degrees in our illustration. Well, uh, there's something very interesting about this value x right here. This value x right here just so happens to be the cosine of theta. And this value y right here where the horizontal line intersects the y-axis, that value happens to be the sine of theta. So the sine of 30 degrees is whatever x is right here in this ordered pair. Uh, part, yeah, pardon me, the cosine of 30 degrees and the sine of 30 degrees is this y value right here. And that will hold true no matter where we put that ray. We can rotate it all the way around, all the way around, and it'll be true for this point, this point, this point, this point. We can always find these xy coordinates the xy coordinate of whatever point it might be, find the angle theta that we went hor uh, counterclockwise around to get to the ray that intersects right here. And then it will always hold true that x equals the cosine of theta and y equals the sine of theta. Very, very interesting. So this point right here has coordinates cosine theta, sine theta. No matter where we make this ray, let's call it R, go around the circle for one revolution from zero degrees here to 360 degrees there. That is the unit circle model of the sine and the cosine functions. Stan Jubilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.